Well, good morning to you, Christ Church Online. Welcome to week two of At The Movies at Christ Church. We're so excited that you've joined us this morning. My name's Aaron, I'm part of the team here, and they asked me if I wouldn't mind coming on here and just talking to you for the next, I guess, I don't know, how, how does it feel about three hours? You got three hours? I'm just kidding. We're gonna, we're gonna hang out here for the next 20 minutes. We're so thankful to God that you're here. Maybe you just heard Pastor, uh, Pastor Nathan explain about uh, Thanksgiving outreach. It's one of our favorite times of the year where we get to serve our community. This year, we're serving over 450 families. That's right, 450 families. And if you would like to be a part of that, all we ask is this Saturday, that's right, this Saturday from nine to 10 o'clock, if you arrive, it's gonna happen at all three of our locations in Ruston and West Monroe and in Sterlington, there are gonna be so many families that are blessed because of you, because of what you do. And if you can't come, we hope that you can, that you can join us. But if you can't, if you would love to give, you can go to Christchurch.la and you can give towards this amazing, amazing mission. Uh, and, and also, I just wanna say this too, uh, something like at the movies, it's absolutely impossible without our amazing production team. And I get the honor of working with these guys and they are wonderful world class, I promise, world class production team that puts all of this together. So let me just explain a little bit of what At The Movies is. We take modern day movies and we pull out the spiritual truth. And today's movie, The Jesus Revolution, is an absolutely incredible, incredible movie. Now, I'll just say to you, that uh, I'm not gonna give the whole movie away. I'm gonna point to a, a couple of things that I feel like God put on my heart to share with you this morning. But Jesus did this. Jesus would take parables, stories, and he would pull out these amazing spiritual truths and teach uh, the people of his day about God, about the goodness of God, about the mercy of God through these stories. And so we're doing exactly that. Pastor Tom is actually gonna be leading us uh, today in, in our movie, but we can't show it, unfortunately copyright laws and things like that. We can't show it online, so you get me. So welcome to it. I'm so excited to be sharing this amazing experience with you this morning. God, I believe, as Pastor Nate just said, I believe that God has something special that he wants to share with you today. You are precious to God. I don't know where you find yourself this morning or what you're going through or what, what, what life has thrown at you lately, but I can tell you that God loves you dearly, that he is for you. I would, even, I would even go as far as to say that God is after you, that he's after your heart, that he loves you, that he's for you and not against you, the Bible says. And maybe for a season of your life, you've wandered away from the Lord. I would just say to you, uh, welcome home, come home. There's no reason to stay away any longer. And that's really the message of this absolutely incredible movie, how God takes the most unexpected uh, characters, these, these amazing men and women, uh, and uses them for his purpose, to bring people home, to bring people into his kingdom. We, we, we find ourselves uh, in this movie, and I, one of my favorite characters in this movie, the whole movie is amazing, but one of my favorite characters in this movie is... Uh, is this young girl named, and let me, I gotta find her name because I, I don't wanna mess this up. Her name is Jeanette. And uh, Jeanette finds herself in this church. In this church, there's not a lot of young people in it. There's not a lot of young people in it at all. And God did an incredible, incredible thing in the Jesus movement uh, back, back during when there were hippies and there was all these people who were around. God did an absolutely incredible, incredible thing uh, through these people. And I don't want to give this whole movie away. Uh, I think you should go watch it. Absolutely. But this is the point that I wanted to bring to you today is that there are young people and they go to our churches and they sit in our churches and maybe they yawn. Maybe they don't know why they're there, but I can tell you this, that there's one thing that I know about young people is they know when they're being loved and when they're not, they know when they're hearing about the love of God, but they're not seeing the love of God. And maybe that's been your experience even with the church, that you hear about the love of God, but you're not seeing it. And I could tell you the heart of Christ church is that not only would you hear about the love of God, but that you would see it with your own eyes. So here at Christ church, you have absolutely no past, only a future. And God has an incredible, incredible future for you. Jeanette is sitting in this church where her father is the pastor and she's yawning as he's reading the scriptures, but she's absolutely mesmerized by the hippie movement, 
these people who are absolutely, they're looking for something. And, and in one part of the movie, it says they're looking for, for love in all the wrong places. They're looking for something in all the wrong places. And it's so obvious as you watch this movie and as you think back about the Jesus movement and you study it, that God was, was ready to do something. That the world was in a state in a time where it was, it, was, it was time for God to do something and he was on the brink of doing it. And so God uses this young, this young woman uh, to really prick the heart of her own dad, her own pastor, to, to say, maybe you should give these people a shot. Maybe you should give them a try. Maybe, maybe you should listen to what they have to say. Maybe instead of just saying things about the love of God, we should begin to show it. And so the pastor, uh, who happened to be Chuck Smith, makes this incredible statement. He says, if God brings me a hippie, then I'll listen to him. I'll talk to him. I'll find out what all of this is about. And that's exactly what God does. Jeanette is driving down the road and just happens to see this guy named Lonnie. Uh, He's got a Jesus, he's got like this jacket on. This is Jesus in the back. He's a hippie that gets saved. He got radically saved by the gospel. She brings him home and she uh, introduces Lonnie to her dad. And the movie just goes from there. The church, uh, Pastor Chuck's church is, is not totally excited about the fact that uh, the church is filling up with these, these young people, these people who are known for drug abuse. Some of them, some of them are even, uh, <laughs> they're, they're working out their, their parole, I believe it was, uh, because of drug abuse. And, uh, and it's so funny when I'm asked for prayer to make it through it. And uh, some of the, the older people in the church are just not having it. They're not having it. They're not excited. The fact that these young people are showing up. Uh, they, they, one person makes the comment that they're they're dirty, and they're going to ruin our carpet. And so, in a awesome, awesome moment in this movie, Pastor Chuck is at the door washing uh, these these people's feet, these hippies' feet, these dirty feet of these hippies. Uh, and it upsets the religious in the church. And some of them do leave, and some of them uh, allow God to work through them in an amazing, amazing way, and they join the movement. And it just blows up from there. I don't know if you've ever felt like you couldn't darken the door of the church. Uh, I know that there have been moments in my life where I felt like I couldn't, even as a pastor, uh, and, or, or as, a, uh, as a, I say not a pastor, but as a young adult, or even as a teenager growing up in the church, there were moments where I felt totally unworthy to be in church. But that's exactly where God would have us be, that he's welcoming us home. He's not wanting us to stay away for any reason whatsoever. The Bible is so clear in, in John chapter 3, verse 17, that God sent the Son, Jesus Christ. He sent his Son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that through him the world might be saved. And so I'll be honest with you, I'm not talking to anybody right now who is a believer uh, or, or who has been a Christian. I want to talk to people who, is, who are struggling right now, who feel like you can't even darken the door of the church. Like your, your history, your past, your sin is too great uh, for God to forgive you. I have news for you. There is no sin in this world that God cannot forgive. You see, Jesus Christ gave his very life for you for you. And he's not even really waiting. I, I Just listen to me. He's not waiting on you. He's with you right now. And he's wooing you to himself, saying to you, come home. Come home. Don't stay away. Don't be away. Don't stay away from, from what God has for you. His love for you is immense. And I would even say this. Today is Baptism Sunday. And I want to charge you. Hear me out. Maybe God's moving in your heart right now. Maybe as you listen to all the things that I'm saying and you feel like you're far from God, you, you feel like God's a million miles away. I got news for you. He's not. He's right there with you. He's speaking to you through me right now. And he's saying to you, come home. Today's Baptism Sunday. Why don't you, if you're in the area, why don't you just get up off your couch right now and come to the church and give your life to Jesus. Come get baptized. Come, come let God change your life forever. You say, well, pastor, I, 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 don't, I don't even know where to begin. I just told you where to begin. Don't wait any longer. Don't, don't hesitate in what God is wanting to do in your life. Who knows, today could be just the beginning of what God is wanting to do in your life. You, you, you don't have to stay away. That's how I always felt 
that God was saying, you've got to change, you've, you've got to clean yourself up. But the Bible says the absolute opposite, that it's God who makes the change in us. And you might not see an immediate change. It, it might be a struggle for you for the rest of your life. I would just say to you, come home. Don't stay away any longer. Don't, don't allow anything that you've been through or that you've experienced to keep you from the love and the grace and the mercy of God. The religious of Jesus' day uh, did the exact same thing that these people in this movie did. As Jesus is sitting with sinners, tax collectors, corrupt tax collectors and sinners, he actually invites one tax collector named Levi, you might know him as, as, as Matthew, invites him to come be a part of the 12 disciples. And Matthew throws a massive party for Jesus in his home. It's amazing to me that this holy God who stepped down out of heaven, put on flesh, is now hanging out with sinners. Well, the religious leaders of Jesus' day felt the exact same way. They say, I can't believe this, if this man was God, if he, if he is who he says he is, why is he hanging out with people like this? And Jesus rebuked them. He rebuked them and he said, uh, hello guys, this is why I came in the first place. He said, he said, the sick are the ones that need a doctor, not those, I love how the NLT puts it, not those who think that they're righteous, but those who need a doctor, those who are sick and know that they're sick, that's who I've come for. And I've got news for you. The Bible says, and one of, it's, it's my favorite scripture. It saves me so many times from uh, myself and my own pride. Romans 3.23, that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us. It's not just some of us. You might feel all alone in your sin. I got news for you. Every person on the face of the planet, except for Jesus Christ, is sinful. Every one of us. And every one of us are in need of a Savior. Every one of us. And that's the message. That's the beautiful, beautiful message of Jesus. That he's for us. That he loves us that he wants us to come home, that he wants to cleanse us and wash us clean. And so I make that charge to you again. Get up off your couch, come to church, come be in the house, come get baptized, come home today. I promise you, if you finish watching this movie, I'm not gonna give any more away, but if you finish watching this movie, you're gonna be absolutely blessed by what you see God doing in the lives of these young people. And I wanna say this to you too, as the young adult pastor of Christ Church, CCYA is waiting on you. If you're 18 to 30 and you have no place to call your home, your home and, and you're looking uh, for a community of young adults who are like-minded, who are seeking God, who are on fire for Jesus, well, you've, you've found it. You have found it. And if you know anybody in that age group who's looking for Jesus, uh, in this movie, I love it because they don't condemn these young people because they're looking for love in all the wrong places. They just become the right place. They become the place, the safe place for young people to come, lay their burdens down, lay their drug addiction down, lay all of these things down. And it's an invitation. It's, it's not a you better, it's an invitation to be loved by Jesus, to experience love that you've never experienced before. And I wanna offer you that on Tuesdays at 6.30. We meet just about every single Tuesday at 6.30. We've got food, we've got fellowship, we've got worship. And of course, we're gonna study the word of God together. But about 100 young adults meet every single Tuesday just about to hang out and love each other, be in community, and to see what God is doing is absolutely incredible. Being part of it is absolutely incredible incredible. And I want to invite you to be a part of it. You don't have to make any more excuses as to why you can't come home and be a part of this amazing movement, the church that Jesus has raised up for himself to be a vehicle in the earth for such a time as this to see great change in, in our world, in our community. And what God is doing is absolutely incredible. I have no other words for it except that it's absolutely incredible. And so I say to you one more time, because I truly believe God laid it on my heart that there's somebody watching this morning and you're contemplating. You believe what I'm saying. You feel pierced in your heart. And I wanna say it again, God loves you. The Bible says in Romans chapter eight that he's for you and that he's not against you. He's wooing you to himself. As one pastor says it, the hound of heaven is after you. And he wants to overwhelm you with love and grace and forgiveness that you've never felt or experienced before. Today is your day. Today is your day. 
get off your couch, get out of your chair, get out of that love seat that you're in. Come to church this morning. Give your life to Jesus. You can do that right now, actually. You know what? Why don't we do that? Why don't I pray us through a sinner's prayer? But like I said, today is Baptism Sunday, and you should come get baptized. You should come give your life, make a public declaration of your life, of your faith to Jesus right now. Why don't you pray this prayer after me? Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner in need of your great grace and your salvation. I thank you that you love me, that you're for me, and that you're not against me. I ask you to come into my heart right now. Forgive me of all my sins, past, present, and future. I want to be your child. I love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me this morning. God bless you. I give that appeal to you one more time. Come to church. Come get baptized. I can't wait to see what God is going to do with what just happened here this morning. We love you, Christ Church. God bless.